Welcome back to Story University Lesson 10, Smart Business Organization to Raise Your Wealth. I'm Chris Volk, CEO of Store Capital. In the first part of this lesson, we dismissed the notion that you need to personally have a lot of money to start or buy a business. It may take money to make money, but it does not have to be your money. And really, most entrepreneurs and successful business founders did not have the advantage of having money to begin with. They had to start or buy their businesses relying on the contributions from other shareholders. Throughout Store University, I've generally referred to OPM or other people's money in the context of borrowings or real estate and equipment lease capital. But the notion of OPM can be extended to include equity capital that you have to raise from other sources. Now, you might be wondering under what terms you might need to obtain shareholder equity OPM. Allow me to illustrate this for you. Let's say you have a business you'd like to create or purchase, and after undertaking an analysis similar to Lesson 1 in Store University, you determined that you need $1 million in shareholder equity. Only you don't have it. The most you can come up with is $250,000. You need to raise 75% of the equity from other sources. So the question is, what percentage of the business are you willing to give those shareholders in exchange for 75% of the equity capital? Now, in my illustration today, I'm going to use just 20%, giving you 80% of the company. Why would an investor agree to such a split? Well, first, you're bringing the idea and the vision. Second, you're putting up an amount of money or commitment that is consequential to you. You may be working for below market wages. Your outside shareholders love an alignment of interest. And third, you may propose to offer outside shareholders a preferred rate of return. In this example, let's use a preferred rate of return of 10% annually. This means that you commit to your shareholders that they're going to realize a 10% rate of return before you get paid. Preferred rates of return could be a huge inducement to attract investors and offer a meaningful way to say that you're shoulder to shoulder with them. So if your business produces a current return on equity of 10%, and here you can use the V formula as a tool to compute the equity rate of return, then your shareholders get 75% of the money, so that they get their 10%, and then you get the other 25%. Note that the V formula is designed to compute a current pre-tax rate of return. Most private companies pay no taxes since their earnings are taxed at a personal level, and this works just fine. If you elect to use a taxable corporate structure, then you might devise a tax rate to apply to the V formula. Anyway, in our example here, you own 80% of the business, but you're only getting 25% of the distributed cash flow because of the commitment that you have made to other shareholders for a 10% preferred rate of return. If the ROE rises to 15%, now you get half the cash flow. If the ROE gets to 30%, you now get 75% of the cash flows. And at an ROE of 40% or better, you get 80% of the cash flows, despite the fact that you only put up 25% of the initial capital. Now, I'm leaving out a crucial piece. There's more to a return than just annual cash distributions. If you're allowing other shareholders a 10% annual rate of return preference, that means you'll also have to make it so that their preference extends to the sale of a business. So upon that sale, they'd be entitled to all of the cash up front until they get their money back and a 10% compound annual rate of return. Thereafter, you get all the cash until their return equates to 20% of the cash flows and residual value, after which the value is split 80% to you and 20% to them. So let's assume that you sell the business at the end of five years and that you sell it for a multiple of around five times the current return on equity. What happens? Well, if your current pre-tax equity rate of return is a constant 15%, then your outside shareholders would get virtually all of the proceeds from the business sale. If your current equity returns rise to 20%, their business split would fall to 75%. And at a constant current equity rate of return of 60% or better, they would get 20% of the proceeds from the business sale, and you, with your smaller 25% investment, would realize 80% of the sale proceeds. How does this illustration look from an internal rate of return vantage point? Well, with a 15% current return on equity business, your outside shareholders would realize a rate of return of 10%. Because you get to catch up to realize 80% of the cash flows as returns increase, your investors would keep a 10% IRR until the business current return on equity hits around 40%. After that, their 20% split starts to increase their rates of return gradually. 
This type of arrangement is ideal for shareholders who are looking to have a nice rate of return, but who also want to protect their downside risk. That is actually a lot of investors. Now, what happens to you? Well, you only have put up 25% of the money and still have an internal rate of return of 15% annually at a current ROE of 15%. By the way, a 15% current ROE would be viewed as fairly mediocre. And yet you still have a personal IRR of 15%. And your outside shareholders still have realized their preferred rate of return of 10%. If you get to an ROE of 30%, your rate of return is about 100% annually on your investment. At a current business ROE of 60%, you can double that to 200%. Here, you're not only making a huge rate of return on your investment, but you've created big time value. If a similar investor were looking to have a similar current rate of return of 20%, you would have just multiplied your $250,000 investment by 10 times to $2.5 million, which you get by dividing your 200% current ROE by the 20% return requirement. If you're wondering how entrepreneurs get really rich, you can now stop because this is how. And in this illustration, you've gotten rich while making all of your stakeholders happy. You've created career opportunities for your staff. You've honored all of your commitments for OPM. And you've offered a nice risk protected preferred rate of return of 10% to remaining shareholders who got paid first before you got a single equity distribution. Now, this example is simply illustrative of the opportunities that are out there for you to attract outside investor capital to help you make your business dreams a reality. There are, in fact, a myriad of options. Certainly, you could raise your investor preferred hurdle rate to 15%. In that case, at a 30% current ROE business, your IRR would fall to about 83% from 100%. That you'd still be around 200% at a current ROE of 60%. Use your imagination, cut the deal, and you're on your way. But you aren't done. There are a few more things to consider, and we're going to do this in our final chapter. Until then, I'm Chris Folk, thanking you for joining me on this value creation journey.